I'm an Army brat. Um, my dad was a career uh, Army officer, and so, you know, I spent uh, the first 18 years of my life uh, growing up all over the United States and the world. Then went off uh, to college in Texas uh, with the intent of being a symphony bassoonist. Uh, was my goal. Uh, but I realized that music is about 20% talent and 80% hard work. And if you don't have the full quotient of 20% talent, you can't work uh, the rest of it. So my father said to me, you know, do something that will do good for people um, and make it be something you can uh, earn a living. So I changed my major to biology and then went on to medical school at the University of Texas Medical Branch in, in Galveston. And subsequently, I trained as a neurologist and neuropathologist. I um, spent, you know, the first 10 years of my career practicing neuropathology. I then had the opportunity at the Cleveland Clinic to uh, be a part of uh, physician leadership in the chief of staff's office and then in the office of uh, clinical effectiveness, which was the beginnings of the Cleveland Clinic's quality uh, program. Um, and found that I really enjoy the administrative side of the world, and so uh, that's what I've been doing ever since. When you uh, have this much white hair, you think back and you realize that there are a number uh, of folks in a number of circumstances that really uh, influence you. And you know, my, my parents get a lot of credit for encouraging me uh, and telling me I could do anything that I wanted to do. Um, I've been really fortunate to have a number of mentors uh, along the way from whom I've learned an enormous amount. Uh, you know, a couple of things that stick with me. One is that you have to be a good listener and an active listener. Um, you need to remember where the work actually gets done and be sure that the frontline people have the tools they need and um, are, are encouraged and recognized for the hard work they do. And then, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to change your mind, especially if the circumstances and the data suggest it. I have a couple of, uh, of long-standing hobbies. Uh, one is uh, I really uh, enjoy cooking, um, and I'm an experimenter. I'll try just about anything once. And the reason I cook is I enjoy it, but uh, I have then uh, to be, uh, I'm a race walker, and I have to walk so I can cook. And, uh, you know, I do a number of races uh, every year and uh, try to um, do something, uh, you know, almost every day um, outside when I can. I think there are a couple of areas that I would like to focus on uh, this year. One is to strengthen the perception of hospitals and health systems with policymakers, the public, uh, engaged stakeholders, that includes, you know, uh, uh, consumers, uh, and, and to really have people realize that uh, it's all about care, but it's also about moving our country's uh, health system forward. And then I think the second part of that is to elevate the leadership of hospitals and health systems in policymaking. Uh, the second area I'd like to focus on. I've been very um, happy the last couple of years to be a part of the uh, Physician Alliance, to try and really align physicians and the AHA and to recognize that this is a team sport and physicians are a key part of, uh, of that team. And, you know, we have worked hard on uh, lead well, be well, and care well. And now it's time to go to 2.0 and to expand that reach. And that's another area of focus for me. The word I might use to uh, describe myself um, is, I think, courageous. And, you know, sometimes when you think about courageous, you think about willingness to do tough things and to um, not turn back. But what I like about it is the Latin root for courageous is heart. And I think that's really what all of us in healthcare are driven by. We're driven by heart and driven by the desire to do the best we can for our patients. Mm -hmm.